Two Broke Betters, presented by Garrett Hollenbach and Dallas Walker. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Episode 8 of Two Broke Betters. I think this is the second recording of Episode 8. Um, our initial recording was an episode last week. Luckily, it didn't come out because we did not do too, too great. But we're back. Episode 8. I'm Garrett. This is my co-host, Dallas. Yo, yo. And then here we're going to talk about Super Tuesday, college basketball, yet again. We sort of missed out on Saturday where there was an insane slate of college basketball, a bunch of top, top ranked matchups, uh, Kansas and Baylor. I mean, the six top teams all, all fell on the road. So I think that pretty much summarizes what, what happened on Saturday. But we've got a pretty pretty good Tuesday night slate. Starting out, we've got Villanova and Providence. Um, my pick for this matchup, I think you know what I'm going to go with. It's a Villanova home game. You know what I've said in the past about their defense for some reason at home. I'm going to go with the under 135. This first matchup, both teams scored an insane amount. I think it was 89 to 84. Um, I don't think that's going to happen in this one. Villanova's defense at home, like I've said, other than one standout game against UConn, they've led up at the most 67 points, which is incredible. Uh, their defense is one of the top five in defensive efficiency whenever Villanova's playing at home. And on top of that, Providence always keeps it close. We know they do. So I think they're going to keep it close. I think Villanova is going to limit them a lot offensively. So I'm going to go with under 135 here. Glad to see we're on the same page to start out. I'm also going under 135. Uh, the Villanova under, it's around 60% at home. Uh, same for Providence uh, away. Um, both of these teams are top 60 in defense. Uh, like you said, Villanova is one of the better defensive teams in all of college basketball. Uh, both teams are also below 250 in uh, adjusted tempo, according to Kim Baum. So uh, while both of these teams, uh, they do have rather efficient offenses, uh, I think the tempo will just be a little too slow. And like you said, they already hit their ridiculous over last time. So I don't see that happening in the end. All right, so there it is. We're both on the same page for game one, under 135. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the next matchup, Kentucky and Ole Miss. Um, I went with over 143 here. I think this is a perfect spot for that. Kentucky, even with players sort of coming back from injury, being rusty, the offense has not seemed to miss a beat whatsoever. Um, top, I want to say top three in offensive offensive efficiency when playing at home. Um, they average more than 80 points a game at home. Uh, the over is 143, so that would mean Ole Miss would have to score 64 points, which would be tough. Um, Kentucky was a top 15 team in defensive efficiency just last week, but they've had four straight games where they are now, or in those in that span of four games, they were 200 like 35th in defensive efficiency, which I think more speaks to how great the two guards are at defense and what that sets up for the rest of the team defensively. And I still think Cal Perry is going to just ease them back into this game against Ole Miss, sort of let them rest because this should be an easy win for Kentucky, which is going to inevitably let up some Ole Miss points. While I think Kentucky has not missed a beat on offense, so I'm going to go with over 143. Uh, I didn't even have a pick for this game. I'm just going to roll with uh, Kentucky minus 16 and a half. Okay. No notes, no nothing. I'm rolling with it. Okay. There we go. Simply the better team. On to the, <laughs> next, on to the next matchup, Kansas and TCU. I went – so I'm going to start out. I went with Kansas minus five and a half, but I think this is the perfect spot for both teams because Kansas is looking for a bounce-back spot after they let up a big lead against Baylor. And TCU 
had a very emotional win where they came from behind and beat Texas Tech. So I said, perfect bounce back spot, perfect letdown spot. Kansas minus five and a half. Uh, this is actually my favorite play of the slate. Um, and I'm on the flip side. I'm on TCU uh, plus five and a half. Uh, as we know, Kansas plays these big 12 teams very close for the most part the whole year. Uh, like you said, TCU coming off a good win against Texas Tech. They're carrying momentum. Uh, I think their home court is a little underrated. They're not great at covering at home, but this is a lower spread. Um, but I think this more has to do with Kansas than it does TCU. Uh, all of Kansas's loss are to teams with a top 50 defense and a uh, below 150 adjusted tempo, and TCU fits right into that category. Okay. Okay. We're on the flip side of this one. It's okay. We have our differences this time. I like Kansas. Dallas likes TCU. We're going to just move on to the next one. I think this is the headliner for, for Tuesday night. Purdue, Wisconsin. Wisconsin won the first matchup at Purdue. Um, with that being said, I'm going to go with the opposite of that in this one. I know people are going to like Purdue to bounce back after an after upset on Saturday. I'm going with that, too. I'm going to go with Purdue minus two and a half on the road. Wisconsin has played well under Greg Gard at home. Haven't been as great this season. They've slipped up at a couple home games in the Big Ten, and they had a couple really tight games against terrible teams at the beginning of the year at home. Uh, also, Purdue has dominated the series. In the last 10 matchups, Purdue's seven and three against Wisconsin. So that's why I'm gonna go Purdue minus two and a half. I think they're, they're at full strength. They're gonna be looking, looking for revenge. They're gonna be looking to bounce back. I think this is the perfect spot for them. All right, just like that, we're back on the same page. I've also got Purdue minus two and a half. Uh, I've been talking about certain players all year. Um, so I just said Jaden Ivey versus Johnny Davis. I want Jaden Ivey. I don't see a huge edge for either of these teams. Um, so I'm going to take the more efficient offense, which is Purdue. That's the only thing I said. Yeah. And on top of that, Johnny Davis, are we serious? <laughs> He's the National Player of the Year runner-up for a reason. It's Austin's <laughs> award. There's a reason he's the odds-on favorite. Come on. We can't Your time has this. come, Johnny. We can't keep making this big of a deal out of Johnny Davis. You got a point. Exactly. There we go. We both got Purdue in that one. Moving on to the last one, I know we both hate making a pick on this. Arizona, USC, Pac-12 basketball, where anything can happen for some reason. I mean, it's like that in any conference, but this one is, it's just chaos. I initially looked at it and thought, okay, I'm going to go with USC plus five because the first one was somewhat close and it was at Arizona. But then I went with the same thing I went with in the Kansas game. Perfect bounce back. Perfect bounce back spot for Arizona who's trying to now get the top seed, which looks like it's in play after Gonzaga lost to St. Mary's, even though they also lost that night. But still, they can still take that top seed. Um, and USC got a very emotional win over Oregon because Oregon was fighting for their lives to make the NCAA tournament. And they were able to beat them by one point at home. So I went with Arizona minus five, looking for them to bounce back here. I'm with you. I'm with you. I've got that same thing. Arizona, eight and four against the spread away from home. USC, garbage, five and ten against the spread at home. Number two, USC has only played two ranked teams all year. One of those games being the nine point loss to Arizona. USC is overrated. And like you said, this is a smash spot for Arizona. I like it. There we go. We've been on the same page with, I think, every pick. I think we both like Kentucky to win by 16 and a half. I just like over 143 better than that. Yeah. So I think we, we both were on the same page with everything except for Kansas and TCU. Yeah. All right, moving on to unranked picks. 
I only have one tonight. Didn't look at any stats here. I just know exactly what's going to happen. Um, I took Vandy minus one. I just know deep down that Florida is going to lose so that they're as mad as possible for whenever Kentucky travels down to Gainesville on Saturday. I just know it. So Vandy minus one. Uh, I've got two. I'm calling them the Mac Levin picks. Uh, <laughs> going to the Mac, uh, I've got Bowling Green, Ohio, over 158. Bowling Green overs are 11 and 3 at home. Ohio offense struggles away from home, but Bowling Green has the 341st defense in college basketball while also having the third ranked tempo. That means a lot of garbage points, a lot of garbage buckets. Uh, last time, uh, a lot of people were on the under. I went with the over. It hit last time. Moving on, we've got Toledo and Buffalo. Buffalo minus two and a half. Everything points to Toledo. This is one of my feeling games. I've only done this a couple times. I think every time, though, it's hit. Uh, Buffalo minus two and a half. Toledo's the better spread team. They win this game. They win the MAC. They're going to choke. I like Buffalo. Yeah. <clears throat> Whenever I was looking at my unranked picks, uh, all the Mac, MAC games stuck out to me, but all of those teams, the ones that are like Toledo, Ohio, it, even if it's not them, there's other teams who have beat up on teams that I like in the match. Yeah. And I just could not, could not put my faith into one of those teams. So I stayed away from those. I just went with the one that I, trust me, I'm not going to use it as one of my favorites. Vanderbilt is winning tomorrow night against Florida. It's just going to happen. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's all of our picks. Let's just run through our favorites real quick. Uh, for me, I took Kentucky Ole Miss over 143. I took one you're not going to agree with, Kansas minus five and a half. And then I took Purdue minus two and a half because I think they are going to get the revenge on Wisconsin. Those are my three. I normally do more than three, but there just wasn't a lot on tonight or tomorrow night's slate, Tuesday night. So. Yeah, I'm going to stick with my uh, three. That's just my thing. Way to steal it. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go with my feeling pick, Buffalo minus two and a half. Like I said, I don't do it a lot. So when I have the feeling, I'm going to go hey, with Josh it. Josh Allen as I'm looking through those doors, just going to let you know that. <laughs> Josh Allen? Mm -hmm. He's not looking through those doors for Buffalo. Just thought you should know. Josh Allen went to Wyoming. Where does he play in the NFL, buddy? Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to your next pick. <laughs> uh, Arizona, you saw it minus five. I saw it minus four. Uh, either way, four and a half, five, whatever. Arizona minus five, that's my second. And favorite play of the slate, TCU plus five and a half. Oh. Somebody's liking the horn frogs. He's feeling a little froggy. <laughs> so there's our favorite picks for the Tuesday night slate. This was episode eight of Two Broke Betters. Um, just remember to gamble responsibly. Hope y'all have a great rest of the week. And I'm, I don't know about you, I'm super pumped for March. March Madness. Coming down to the wire. What is it? We're coming down to the end. Yep, we're coming down to the end. Season's almost over. So there it is. Remember to follow us on all social media at Two Broke Betters. And here's Dallas for his part of the intro. Love you.